What we're going to be covering today is what is the anchor point and how do we use it? What's it used for and why is it relevant for when we're moving things in After Effects? Great, so just before we begin the video, do remember to leave a like and to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a After Effects tutorial. There is a playlist on the channel specifically for After Effects tutorials, so do check that out if you're interested in learning more about After Effects. Great, so let's jump right in. What we're going to do to start off with is create a shape so I can actually show you what an anchor point is. So all I'm going to do is go up to the rectangle tool at the top. As you can see, the shortcut is Q. Just press on that once. That shortcut is for both Mac and Windows, by the way. I'm just going to hold my left mouse key and just draw out a shape. I'm just going to hold shift to keep it in proportion. So we have a square and just go back to the move tool, which is this first option. And as you can see, the shortcut is V. I'm also just going to align it to the center. So we have it nice and easy in the middle. Now, as you can see, when I have the shape selected, we also have what is called an anchor point. So we have the outline, which is identified by this blue border with all of these squares in the corner and in the middle of the lines. These actually indicate how you can scale the image and manipulate it in either direction. But what this anchor point is useful for is it allows us to determine where we're going to actually scale or rotate this image from. So it's a very useful thing. Now it can be slightly hard to grasp your head around how it actually works. So first of all, let's see how we can actually move it. So what we need is a tool that allows us to move this. And this is the tool just to the left of where we selected the rectangle. And as you can see, it's called the pan behind tool or the anchor point tool. And as you can see, the shortcut is Y. So I always use shortcut Y on my keyboard just because it's much, much easier. And now what we can do is we can actually select that anchor point and move it. Now, as you can see, it can be quite fiddly to actually get it to snap to any points. We don't have any guides. In order to get this up, all we have to do is press command or it'll be control if you're on Windows. And as you can see, this shows us all of the places where it's easy to snap this to. So if we want to snap it to any of these squares or if we want to snap it to any of the corners or in fact to the center of our image. And all you have to do there is just release. And as you can see, it's now in the center. Now, if I just quickly move that out, if you wanted to quickly snap that to the center of your image, all you have to do is go back up to that icon, hold command and press twice on your left mouse key. And as you can see, if you press that in quick succession, it's now snapped to the center of our square. So that's just a quick way of doing that without having to go fiddle around, hold command and move it all the way to that position. Now, if I just quickly unselect this square, and press Q on our keyboard because we know that's how you create a rectangle. As you can see, what After Effects is always going to be doing is it's always going to create the anchor point to the center of our entire composition. So at the moment, the center of our composition is here. But if we, for example, want that center point to always be in the middle of our square, you can actually change this to the default. So all you have to do is go to After Effects and Preferences and General. And then when the Preferences window pops up, all you have to do is go to the option that says center anchor point in new shape layers. Just make sure there's a tick next to that and press OK. And then if I just quickly unselect this square and draw out a new one, as you can see, it's now automatically snapped to the center of our square, which is very, very handy. I'm actually going to get rid of these last two because I don't want all of these shapes. So I'm just going to select them and press delete on my keyboard. Great. So I'm just going to quickly go back to the move tool and select our square. So why is this anchor point actually relevant? Well, if I press S on my keyboard to bring up the scale properties for this square, as you can see, if I adjust the scale of our square, it's always going to scale it from our anchor point. So if we quickly move our anchor point just by pressing Y on our keyboard and maybe snapping it to this top right hand corner by pressing command or control for windows on our keyboard and now adjust the scale, as you can see, it's always going to scale from that new point. So this is why the anchor point is very, very important. If you want your animation to start from a specific place, then you've got to make sure that the anchor point is in that position. So it's actually going to scale from there. And this is the same for rotation. So if I press R on my keyboard to bring up the rotation values, then as you can see, if I try to rotate our square, it's always going to rotate once again from that position. If I quickly move our anchor point to another position, as you might have already suspected, it's also going to rotate from that point. Now, when we're animating, it's also actually possible to change the position of the anchor point. So if I press A on my keyboard, as you see, it's now brought up the transform property for anchor point. 
So if I made a keyframe just by pressing on our stopwatch and then moving our indicator along to one second, making sure that Y is still selected on my keyboard, holding command and snapping it to this new corner. As you can see, as I slowly move my indicator along, the anchor point is also going to change position. Now, one important thing to bear in mind is when you do adjust the position of your anchor point, Photoshop is also automatically going to adjust the position value of your layer. So if I just quickly press U on my keyboard, just to bring up all of the keyframes that we have currently made, then as you can see, Photoshop has automatically generated position keyframes in order to counteract this movement of the anchor point to make sure that our image remains in the same place because the position is also adjusted according to the position of the anchor point. So this is just something to bear in mind because this is going to happen if you change the position of your anchor point. So those were the essentials of what are anchor points in After Effects. So like I said, anchor points basically allow us to adjust the transform properties of our layer. We can use the shortcut Y to bring up the pan behind tool or the anchor point tool, which allows us to move the anchor points and using command on our keyboard, we can actually snap it to certain points on our layer. We can also go to preferences to make sure that the anchor point always snaps to the center of our layer every time we create a new shape. And finally, we can also animate the position of our anchor point within our layer. And finally, we can actually also animate the position of our anchor point to make sure that it's in the right part of our layer and that we can transform our layer in the way that we need to do using scale, rotation, position, etc. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you're interested in learning how you can actually apply motion blur to your animations in After Effects, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner of the end screen. And otherwise, do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and do subscribe to make sure you never miss a new After Effects tutorial.